So now in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can open the door when our player is walking nearby. We're gonna have two ways to open that door. We're gonna have a first one where the player is just gonna be around that door and it's gonna open automatically when the player is around it. And another one when the player needs to be around and to press a button so after that, we can uh, toggle the uh, opening of that door. First, you can see that my door here is wide. That's something I haven't addressed in the last video. I'm going to show you where it comes from. So if we go to door house right here, and we go to our door, uh, I think it's anim right here. It's on the animation player node. We have here something that is called reset on save. You can see that right now it's on. If I uh, over it, it says that this is used by the editor. If it's set so true, the scene will be saved with the effect of the reset animation. I don't want that. That's the reason why our um, door here appears white. Uh, and so the simple fix for that is just to toggle that off. And so now if I save and I go back to my main level, you can see that my door is uh, showing up nicely. And also something, that's a problem that I was having as well with the, uh, the chest. And so that's something also I will do uh, on the chest. But basically now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our door. And here we need to have a way to detect our player. And we already know that because we have done it already quite a few times. We need to go to our door, click on the plus right here, and we're going to look for an area 2D. Now that area 2D, I'm going to call it player underscore detector, ah, no, underscore detector like this. And that player detector is going to be in need of having a collision shape. And that collision shape this time is going to be a circle. Uh, that circle, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to put something that is purplish like this. So it's easily um, visible for me. I'm going to click on my player detector. I'm going to click here on the move mode and I'm going to uh, drag that down around around here will be all right. Um, I'm going to leave the, the shape like this. I think it should be all right. And so now what we need to do is we need to uh, connect our player detector to our door. But for doing so, we need to have a script uh, on our door. So for that, I'm just going to click on my door, click here on the uh, script icon, and I'm going to put that script into my script folder that is a bit before here right here and I'm gonna um, save it I think here I'm gonna put it in interactable and I'm gonna uh, save my script right there I'm gonna click on create and so now I have my script so now what I want is just when the player detect uh, uh, when the player enter I want to open the uh, the door so that's what we're going to do now so I go on my player detector I go here to node I go then here on body entered I'm going to click on connect and I'm going to connect that to my door I'm going to click here and here what I want to do is I want to uh, transition from my close animation to opening and then open. So for that here, yeah, what I can do is like I'm going to do a if statement. I'm going to I'm going to say if body dot name is double equal to a player. Then here, what I want to do is I want to get access to my animation players. For that, we do dollar sign anim dot play. And here we're gonna uh, get our open animation. Then we want to make a no wait because we want to uh, make sure that we play this animation first and then play the other one. So for that, we need to do a wait. Uh, dollar sign anim dot animation finished. And then here we can just say again dollar sign anim dot play. And this time here we want open. And with that done, that will be uh, opening our door for us when we will uh, enter into that zone. So I can save. And uh, what I can do is just make sure if I go back to my 2D, uh, 2D viewport, in the player detector, I go to inspector here and make sure that the collision collide with the player, which is the, which is the case because it's on one and one and my player is also on one and one. And so now let's have a look. I'm going to launch the game. I'm going to go there and if I come here, it opened the door. It opened the door quite quickly. So maybe there's something that I can do there. Let's, uh, let's retake a look at this. So I come here. 
yeah it opened the door super quickly so there's something that is not going right here so i can maybe do something else i found why it's just because i've made a typo so i've put two times the same um the same um, animation so here instead of open i need to do opening like this and then after that it will go to open so let's have a look Voila, so now that's good. So now that we have done that, what we need to do is we need uh, to create the other uh, version of that uh, specific animation. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to check if the, um, uh, the player is pressing uh, a key. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, in my door door script i'm gonna create another function and that function i'm gonna it's a built-in function it is called input event input event and here i'm gonna say if input with a capital i dot is underscore action press just press uh, here i need to create um, uh, an input so i need to go back to my project project setting and here i'm gonna go to input map i'm gonna uh, choose um, maybe i'm gonna name it ui underscore dialog something like this or ui underscore door that maybe is a better name i'm gonna click on add and i'm gonna click on the plus here to uh, map a key uh, to that um, onto that uh, ui door so what key i can use i think i can use uh, something i'm gonna use o O for open <laughs> and so I'm going to use that one here and so now that I've done that I can go back here and I'm going to look for my UI underscore door it is right there and then if it's the case we can uh, do what's in this but what is better is that I can also just copy that here I can copy it and I can put that in a function here so I'm going to create a function I'm going to call it func opening underscore door and then i'm gonna pass that here like that so like this i can re uh, i can uh, reuse that where i need it so here for example if body.name equal player i can say opening underscore door like this and that will have the same effect and then here for now i'm gonna pass for this one first i'm gonna test that my code is working so i'm just gonna come back here I'm going to go back to my door and see if it's still open. It opens nice, so that's perfect. So now we need here to uh, have a way to uh, trigger um, that uh, that opening of the door. So that here for now, what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to uh, just comment it and I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to come here at the top and I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to create a variable. The variable, I'm going to call it uh, player underscore entered. And per default, I'm, I'm going to set it to false. So now what I want to do is like when the player is going to enter into the player detector uh, area, so this one right there, uh, it's going to change that player entered from false to true. And then when that, uh, if that uh, variable player entered is true and we have pressed that button, then we can open the door. That's what I'm going to do. So the first thing here is I'm going to say player underscore entered is equal to true. And so now here, I'm going to make an if statement if input is action just press. And here I'm going to make also another, uh, another uh, specification. And I'm going to say and player entered is double equal to true. Then here we're going to be able to open uh, the door. So here we're going to call the function that we have created just right here, opening door. So I can just copy that and pass it here. And what I want to do as well, just to make sure that we can debug things nicely, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to do a print. And here I'm going to just print player entered. And I'm going to copy that line right there. Something like that. And then here, what I want to do is I want to turn back player entered to false when uh, opening door has been uh, opened. But before to do that, I'm just going to test the thing. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to come to that zone. Player entered is equal to true, and if I click on O, it opened my door, as you can see. So that's perfect. But the problem is that if I come here, I can replace O, 
then it's gonna reopen my door again and again. So here what you can do is like you can create a system where once your door is open, you can delete the player detector or you can just disable it. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna disable that. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say that uh, if the one player gonna be entered, so after this, uh, I'm gonna do that in the opening door. So here, after we have opened the door, here I'm gonna just say that the uh, um, collision shape is disabled per default. So here I can just copy that line. And then here after that, I can uh, get the player detector uh, collision shape. And so for that, I just need to do dollar sign player detector collision shape dot disabled is equal to true. And so now I'm just going to toggle my uh, debug collision shape, visible collision shape right here. But this is not going to be enough because we need also one other thing. Here we need to also uh, make our player entered back to false. So here I can just copy that line and I can put it here. And so now that will, go, uh, that will do. So now if I launch the game, I'm going to come here. I'm going to go back to my zone here like that. You can see that for now my zone is like still uh, still uh, enabled normally, no problems. And if I click on O, now it's going to be disabled, voila. And if I come here, I can't open back the door again. So that's perfect. So now we have like uh, the basic of a system here that works. So now what we need is we need to have a way to uh, toggle, enfin, to give a um, uh, a visual indication to the player that we can press a certain key for uh, opening that door. So here what I'm going to show you is like I'm going to create on that door, I'm going to create a new node and that node I'm going to call it uh, is going to be a label and that label going to be name press underscore O like this or press button let's say it's going to be better and here I just want to put like um, uh, something. So here I want what I want to do is I want to say uh, press press O like this and I just go back to my 2D viewport and I'm gonna just take that uh, label I'm gonna put it around here and uh, what I'm gonna do is per default that button not gonna be uh, active so here what I want to do is I want to toggle the visibility off so for that what I can do here is like I can just go on the ready function and I can get access to my label and I can say dollar sign press button dot visible visible is equal to false but when the player is in uh, the area then I can just call that button press button dot visible equal to true and then what we need here is we need to also toggle it off when the player go out of the zones. So for that, we're going to go to the player detector right there and we're going to uh, have a use of the body exited. So here I'm going to go to body exited, click on connect. I'm going to click on connect it on my door, connect. I'm going to create that function right here. I'm just going to remove a bit all of this and I'm going to take that and I'm going to click on alt and the upper arrow key just to move that a little bit above my function input and here I just want to get my uh, press button visible back to full so I'm just going to copy that line right here and I'm going to pass it there like that so let's have a look no not like that voila like this so now let's have a look I save I come back to my to my game I come here you can see press zero, we have a problem for like the the, the overlaying but that's okay if I go out we can't see uh, the, um, the stuff anymore, so that's cool. And if I come here and I press O, then that's good. Perfect. So now we just need to uh, uh, make use of the ordering on the label. So I need to come back here, ordering, and I'm going to put that at 3, even 4 maybe. And so let's have a look now. I come here. I enter into the zone and you can see press zero. We can change the color as well. So because like right now the color is not that uh, that visible. So I can go to team override color and I can go to font color. And here I can pick a color that will match, that will just pop up uh, better, something that will pop, you know, 
Uh, so I come here, maybe I can put something like that. I would like a sort of like golden stuff like this. I think this will be good. Yeah, this will be quite all right. So I can also change, uh, because I'm here, I can also change the uh, font or the constant or the font size. Yeah, I'm just going to change the font size. I'm going to put the font size at, uh, let's say, something like this, something like 28. And I'm going to put that right here. I think this will be good. So I come back here, and if I come here, voila, press zero, that's good. So now we have the basic of how to uh, create a system of door that we can open uh, with uh, pressing a key or the, the, the older method that I've shown you before this one, which is like just entering into that area and uh, opening the door automatically. Uh, of course, the uh, label, you can replace it by an image. So if you want to do that, you just, instead of creating a label, you can just create a sprite and you can do the exact same thing, uh, toggling the visibility on and, uh, and off. And that will work as well. You can also create animation. You can create a lot of things like it depends of what you want to do. Uh, for this video, I'm just, I'm just staying simple because like this, I don't, uh, spend too much time uh, on like making things uh, that can be boring for you. <laughs> so, but that's basically just the logic, the core logic of uh, of this method is this one.